hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Community Voices. I'm Cassidy, Senior Strategist of Cultural Partnerships for JD Sports and Finish Line. Today I'm sitting here with an incredible group of women. I'm so excited um, and we'll just jump into it. I'll give some introductions. We have Jasmine Nicole, CEO and founder of The Nice Plant. Hi, Jasmine. Hi. And then we have Diara Nazarian, motion graphics designer and illustrator. Hi there. Roxy Diaz, Emmy Award winning TV host. Hi, Roxy. Hey, guys. And then Kashmir Nicole, CEO and founder of Beauty Bakery Cosmetics. Hello, everyone. Again, thank you for being here, you guys. Um, you know, we're celebrating Women's History Month. Um, but specifically today, I'm celebrating with you International Women's Day. So let's get right into it. All right. So for this first question, it will be to the group. Um, what does International Women's Day, Women's History Month mean to you guys? And how do you like to celebrate? I can, I can go first. Um, I think it's a time to really celebrate the gains we've made. Um, to enjoy where we are in the present, but also look towards the future. And I think as women, uh, generally what I find is we're very, very nurturing and we're, we're good at giving and we're so good at hyping each other up, but sometimes um, we're, we're not championing ourselves that way. So I feel like it's also a really good time to check in with yourself, like look back, see where you've been, like acknowledge your present and then try to reassess like what you want your trajectory to be like, what um, what did you let fly before that, you know, maybe you want to approach differently going forward and maybe just like reassess like what your goals and standards are, whether it's at work, like your personal life and just how you want to progress moving forward. I think it's definitely a good time to, yeah, just check in with yourself as a woman and reassess like what are you going to let fly, what you're not anymore. Yeah. Love that. I would have to kind of piggyback off of that. I think that it's a good time to look at all of your goals, whether they're set up with pillars or different aspects of your life. If there are some inspirational women in your life, um, kind of evaluate yourself and see, you know, what you can do to put yourself on a path to being great. I think one of the challenges in being a woman is that we are so detailed and it's probably why there's so so much cattiness for us within womanhood is we see these finer details but I, I think that I always want to challenge myself to make sure that I remember that when you say woman owned that I remember what challenges she actually is up against I think it's a term that gets tossed around um, yet we see time and time and again, it's women tearing us right back down. And it's like, hey, don't we all know that we're cramping, we're raising the kids, we're, the kids are sick, you know, we're doing a lot. And I think it's re just really important to remember that when you hear woman, she is wearing, you know, the world on her back and to show up for her and to also show up for yourself. Love that. Beautiful. Um, I definitely want to jump in. I personally just embrace the responsibility for like the young young little girls in my life as an auntie I don't have children just yet but um it's one of my favorite roles and so I always take time to at least reflect and have a conversation or two about the possibilities because I think that was one of the things that I won't say hindered me but probably slowed me a little bit early on just getting started feeling like you know, is, is there space for me? Um, as we've all experienced, uh, in one way or another, but just taking the time, like during this time uh, of the year and really every other day to take inventory, kind of like the other ladies, um, said, uh, just taking inventory as far as like, how am I positioning my teams, my businesses to, um, embrace to uplift like women to put them in positions to advance in their careers and whatever they're working on creatively professionally or personally but uh yeah it just it it's like a gentle reminder for me to also educate um the men in my life um who who don't really always understand like 
yes, we should celebrate women and we should, you know, hire women, but like, let's talk about why, like, do you really understand? And, and just, you know, taking the time to have a few conversations that um, can definitely broaden horizons and uh, lead to more clarity on like what the real struggle has been and why we're here and why we're celebrating and championing each other and hopefully ourselves. So, yeah, definitely. I, I have to like piggyback off a little bit of what each of the ladies have said here today um, with what Kashmir said. You know, I think that this month in, in general is it's a time for us to put the cattiness away. I'm um, just like we can be our biggest crab in the barrel. I think it's a time to actually uplift each other, um, especially for International Women's Day. I think that it's an opportunity to learn outside of the United States, outside of what's happening in our own country and uh, be well, be more informed of the issues that are happening around the world that uh, affect women, whether it's uh, child reproductive services that are not allowed in certain countries, whether it's laws just like being able to drive and us being able to do that. I think it's a time for us to be able to come together as women all in general worldwide and advocate for women's rights across the world. Um, being able to get an education, which a lot of us here in the United States take for granted, being able to own our own homes and and create opportunities and own our own businesses. You know, uh, there's a lot of advantages that we have here in this country that a lot of other countries do not have. So I think it's a time to champion not only each other, but women around the world and, and get to know women that are in different fields as you. I'm envying J Jasmine's background right now because I know my green thumb is more on the <laughs> yellowish brown side. So I feel like she could help me out and Kashmir being a beautiful woman as she is having her, I mean, having her own makeup line. It's like, you know, champion beauty products, black owned products, minority owned products, you know, women products at the same time. So I think that that's amazing. And there's not a lot of women in the tech field as well. So, you know, as Naz, as Ms. Nazarene is holding it down, and I'm sorry if I said it wrong, mama, but it's just like to champion women like that, because as we all have in our respective fields, we have so many challenges. The last challenge we should have is going up against another woman. We should really be cheerleading each other and, and wanting to see a woman succeed um, and show men that to stop having that stereotypical name brand of, of being catty or being difficult or being hard to work with, that shouldn't be the, stereotypic, the stereotypical things that people think about when hiring women. They should see that we all work together in the great working environment and we're all team players because the fellas do it well. We just, for some reason, haven't been able to get over that speed hump. So I think this month is a time to actually lead by example. Wow, I love all those answers. You guys, seriously, coming from a family too with all daughters and being close to my mom and we're, we all are, um, just hearing, you know, reflecting and championing, champion, championing <laughs> um, each other. I think it's just, just a beautiful way of looking at the world and of women and just in, as a whole. So thank you for all those answers. Really inspiring. Um, so we're going to move forward. I'm going to, ask you individual questions now. We're gonna start with Kashmir. Um, Kashmir, you have a lot of inspiration in your story. Uh, you're a mother, cancer survivor, uh, you know, owner of a successful beauty brand. What inspired you or continues to inspire you to beat the odds and stay resilient? I think that you really, at least for me, when I was going through breast cancer and maybe even raising my daughter, I had my daughter at 16. And I think you really only have two decisions. You can like, like with cancer, it's almost like you can lay down and die. You can, you can truly just give up when you get news like that and decide that, you know, that's the path you're going to go with. Everything's a decision. And that's, that's the decision most of us never make. We never choose to just say, I give up so early in, in that process. And so I think that that kind of set the stage. Something definitely shifted in having my daughter. And I tell her all the time, like, I don't know if I would have as much drive if I wouldn't have had you. I don't know if I would be this hungry, sweet little beast. Like I go after everything and, you know, I need to be told no, like five ways before I really accept your no. Cause I'm like, I know I can launch this product. I know a cookie can look like this, you know, but I, I think that you have to decide 
for yourself and try and be decisive. Like, what are my real options? And as you start to peel back the, the onion, you'll see that really it's just to keep going. You don't know what's on the other side. I didn't know my brand would ever take off. I didn't know I would find a way to feed my daughter. I didn't know, but I just kept going. And I think that there's a lot of power in that. Thank you for that. Um, I'm about to be a mom in like two months and I'm having a baby girl. So to hear you say um, those things, it's really inspiring to me. So thank you uh, for that answer. That was beautiful. Um, Troy, don't want to get like <laughs> <laughs> um, Next up, Roxy, uh, you've been very versatile in your career. You know, this popular television host, um, personality and actress uh what drives you to try new things um and what helps you continuously grow at what you love you know i think that embracing change and embracing age as well um i i was fortunate to grow up in a household where uh we were taught to try new things whether it was food or experiences you know the rule was you got to try it once before you could tell me you don't like it you know, so I think I've always approached that when it comes to my career as well. Um, and being more authentic, you know, I, I take on projects that I love. I mean, we know as women in our, our own respective fields, we don't do this because of a check. We do it because we really love what we do. And when you love what you do, the money doesn't even really matter, to be completely honest, because you like you look forward to doing it. And that's really living um, a real life. So I always take on projects that I find fun, challenging as well. I want to see what boundaries I could hit and also accepting those that I'm not good at, you know, so I just focus on the ones that I am good at. But I, I had been very, very fortunate to be presented with some amazing projects in my career and, and I've enjoyed every single one of them. And, and now I get more fulfillment in teaching. I'm actually currently an interim professor at Bowie State University, which is you know a historically black college. And I like teaching girls that look like me, brown girls, black girls that usually have a challenge in this industry. I'm giving them firsthand of what I went through because I didn't have nobody like that growing up. So the fact that I can give that part of me back Teaching would have been something I would have never thought that I would do, but it, it, I wish so many of us and, and, you know, I challenge every single woman in this room, you guys could do it as well as I do it because, you know, some of you are, have children, the next generation, who better to learn from than you? And I think a lot of us have to do that more. So, yeah, I, I just, I think the secret is literally being authentic to yourself and what you like to do and taking on things that you love. And, and that's when your best work is really gonna shine, to be honest. Well, I feel like I'm learning from you just listening to you. So I'm sure you're an amazing teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely a cool teacher, that's for sure. <laughs> I love it. I love the cool teachers. They're the only ones I got along with. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Diara, up next. Um, as an artist, um, how do you connect with that community, specifically other female artists? Um, and talk to us about that support system and how it might drive the work you do. Um, I think before and even now, it's mostly digital, like it's a pandemic, we're all at home. Um, but uh, definitely just like supporting each other and championing, championing each other's wins, I think is, is so important. I think especially recently, there's just been um, this like lack of competitiveness uh, that I really enjoy, like this lack of comparison. I think we've all just come to a place where we realize like no one's taking food off your plate, like there's enough for everybody to eat. So it maybe when you're, you're younger, you feel like that kind of drive, like you feel like someone's in your lane, but I think we've all come to a place of, I don't know, like love and maturity where we realize like we all are in our own lanes and we're not uh, detracting from each other and we can all support each other. Like it's real life scenarios. Like it's nothing if I pass on a job and I see like another girl take it. Like I know like she's gonna throw something my way or I'm gonna throw something another girl's way. I think there's just this like spirit of camaraderie 
that I've recently come into that I really appreciate. And I think even outside of that, like my group of friends who aren't necessarily like in, you know, art or illustration, like they're in their own creative fields. Like what I appreciate about that is like the, just the support and reciprocity they're able to provide. And I feel like if ever I'm, you know, questioning my value or what I bring to the table, like they're always able to remind me that I am the table, you know? And I think that's so valuable, um, whether or not you have like women who know exactly, who are in your field and know exactly what you have to go through, just having that support system to keep you grounded and strong is very important to me. I love that. We are all the table. <laughs> I love that. I really do. I think it's so important. Um, so thank you for that. Um, all right, Jasmine, what inspired you to take a leap and start your own business, The Nice Plant, um, you know, alongside your many career talents of being a producer and brand content creator? Talk to us about that. Um, very interesting path. Uh, getting to launch and found the nice plant. It all happened during the pandemic. Um, as many of us were disrupted uh, by our primary lane, if you will, um, I was in that same boat. So producing events, a lot of brands were kind of losing different budgets. Early on last year, we had huge events canceled, events later in the year. So it was very, very odd for me to kind of sit in stillness a little bit more than usual. Um, but I embraced it honestly, because I lead such a busy life. A lot of times my like wellness practices or just time for self-care is often like pushed to the back burner. So in that kind of brief moment of stillness and my, um, just constant need to be doing, I pivoted. Um, and I, I wanted to curate something that could be a part of, um, like our legacy, my fiance and I actually uh, work on the company together. And it just made sense to kind of fuse my love for plants, which is obviously very authentic um, as this is my house, um, my love for plants, but then also our skill set of being able to craft brands, storytelling and manage um, e-commerce. So we wanted to, you know, simplify gifting and then create a lane where you know, self-care and mindfulness, um, it doesn't always look one way. So all of that kind of boxed into something that can literally be delivered to your door uh, was the perfect solution. And for us, for me, building generational wealth is extremely, extremely important. It's, you know, important for me to show and be an example to the little ones in my life that you can literally build and craft the life you want and it can look like anything. And that means setting yourself up to win. So I wanted to launch a company that I was passionate about. I love Roxy, everything you're saying about, you know, just loving what you do and being passionate. It's really not about the check, but it's nice to be able to found something, be a CEO of a company that is going to create opportunities for women, for, you know, the children in my life, my nieces, my nephews, if there is some lane that I can bring you in on and, and, you know, add to the experiences and your professional uh, or career development, like that's literally our goal overall. So I was just really excited to essentially have the skills to even do it in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a lot of things being disrupted, but to also bring a solution and a, a lane for people who kind of feel on the, on the margins, on the outside. You see a lot of um, wellness-minded brands or um, thoughtful, uh, you know, just there's a lot of the, the brands that try to bring mindfulness, wellness to the forefront, but it doesn't always, we're not always included in the center. We're not always included in the picture. So um, that's, I mean, long story <laughs> short, uh, I'm just really passionate about plants and wellness and being able to fuse all of that from the business perspective and bring it to life has been really exciting in just under a year. Well, congratulations. That's so cool. I mean, and I can definitely take some tips on having more of a green thumb. 
<laughs> I'm following her on Instagram right now. I'm over here like, uh, the nice plant. Yes, yeah, I got I'm going to need some help after this. Okay. I got I'm you. Always getting fine. all of you plants for sure. Yeah. It, it really is how I practice, um, you know, just, just slowing down a little bit, you know, and it doesn't, you don't have to be some yoga, yoga guru or, or out here to really take care of yourself, to give yourself little moments of just, uh, slowing down, paying attention to your mental health. And, and that's kind of where, where my plants come in for me and hopefully what we're building as a community, you know, for, for everyone out there. Yeah, hopefully after following you and just taking some tips, I won't be buying the plants that I just have to like spray, you know, like I feel like I'm- My plant is fake. I just want <laughs> to- we, We're gonna fake. get you, we're, we're, I'm, I'm gonna take care of you. We're, we're gonna get you a real one. <laughs> I love it. Well, I think out of all of those questions, um, our audience can take something away from you guys. Um, I feel truly inspired just to hear a little bit more about your stories and how you all have- your own opinions and what you're doing and why you're doing it. So thank you um, again for all of that. Um, this last question will be to the group again. Um, and I think it's a great way to end it. Um, within your life and careers, what's a key moment or a takeaway uh, that you learned that you feel is important for our future generation of women to hear? I would... I would just say that applying the things that we are learning, applying the things that we're sharing with each other to your own industry, to your family, to your life, applying your experiences and um, using your own experiences as almost like a data point to kind of dictate what you're going to do next. And an example I have would be, you know, we all have menstrual cycles. And I think for two years I had been wanting to have, I wanted to call it the pussy power day, but I didn't call it that. I ended up calling it the flower power day. I had been wanting to start a flower power day at my company, but what was holding me back was what was essentially created by men, laws, um, some of our societal norms. And I thought, oh gosh, if I try and do this, like I could get sued. I don't know how this will go. Like I kept thinking about it and really wanting to offer the first day of your cycle off of work. I just, I never understood the 40 hour work week. I studied it. I understood who created it and where it came from. And it seemed to be created without us in mind. And here we are raising kids. You know, when I had my daughter, I got two weeks off, two weeks off and I was right back at work and school. And, you know, I was thinking about our employees and how could I make their experience at, at our company better? And I thought, I'm just going to try it. <laughs> Hopefully nothing goes wrong. And I finally um, started that last spring. So we have a flower power day where you get the first day of your cycle off. And we have a lot of hardworking people at Beauty Bakery. And I don't even know if they always use it, but it's there. And I think it's very comforting to know that you have an employer that doesn't punish you for something that you can't help. Like this is just us who we are. And so I would encourage anyone to think about the things that make you uncomfortable. Think about the times that you've minimized your voice when you've given your power away and think about how you can get that back and use that to as a strategy um, for your company, for your branding, for your content creation, anything that you're doing there. Sometimes it's right there with us. Well, I love that. And everyone's cycle is different too. So, um, you know, it's just like, you never know what another woman next to you is going through during that time. So I think it's definitely important. So that's really cool. I love that. I just want to like jump in and say, I feel like there, we all champion, champion these like female owned brands or companies, but I think even in like the last few years, there's been you know, all these exposés about how like they really aren't championing women within their business, you know? So e even hearing something like that makes me go like, oh, like that's how it, it should be. Like you, you should cater to women. Like I think the point of like supporting like a women, a woman owned brand, like you, you want to feel like they, they get you, they understand you and they're going to make 
whether you want to call it a allowance or what, but just understand you better as a woman and like cater to you in that way. So I think that's amazing. Thank you. I'm all here for a flower power day. I'm like, can I have that right now? That sounds so good. And that doesn't have to be just limited to women. That could be men too, because they go yeah. through PMS stages all the time, even though they don't want to admit it. But it could be just your, I would like to say like your mental health awareness, I think is something that's really important, especially um, as women. And we have so much to bear on our shoulders. Like being a mom or becoming a mom or wanting to become a mom, which is equally, you know, becoming a wife, all of these things play into, into consideration when thinking about our careers and what we do go through. Um, but I think that being able to embrace the highs and lows, especially for me and my career, I mean, yeah, winning an Emmy, that's cool and all, but there's been times between having that Emmy and not having a job too. So being able to be cool with the highs and lows of life and being able to deal with it and just know, you know, the, my favorite motto is the best is yet to come. Like there's, there better will come. And this isn't the last, you know, sad day or rainy day. There's going to be more rainy days, but there's going to be more happy days as well. And just keeping positive and having a positive um, attitude to it. So I, I think that's the best way uh, to continue living and especially being a great example to these young women out here that, uh, you know, sometimes less is more. <laughs> Be careful with your social platform. I think that's the one I preach the most is like, put the red cup down and don't be all bikini shots, you know, like be professional, you know, treat your business and treat yourself as a professional as well. So that's definitely something that, that I preach. That's amazing. Um, I, I would love to kind of chime in on, you know, something that I'm passionate about sharing and it's not always just for like the future generation I think it's for for our generation it's like a reminder to self as well but um you have agency like you have space um that belongs to you it, it's just a matter of showing up doing the work and believing that so whatever you believe you are you are whatever you believe you can kind of accomplish attain uh, you can. It's it's really, I hate that it sounds a little cliche, but that's literally one of the hardest battles in the beginning. Um, just believing that you belong in a space, in a room. And so for women, we're, you know, it's an ongoing challenge. There's conversations, there's, there are meetings that we still have to kind of <laughs> uh, demand space in which is a little bit uh, frustrating in 2021, but um, it's your duty. Like you cannot shrink. And, you know, as I say it, I'm telling you, it's a reminder to self because it's not, it's not a battle you go through when you're like teens, early twenties, and then cool, you get over it. It's an ongoing thing. So you're not in that uh, emotional space or headspace alone, but you do have to go uh, you know, and just tackle it head on. Um, and so that's something that I hope that I continue to permeate through, you know, with all of my relationships, anyone that I work with, um, anyone who I will in the future get the chance to mentor, uh, the young ones who look up to me now, like it's, it's just exciting to be in the, it's exciting to be, to have that uh, challenge, you know, to say like, no, I need to be in this room. I need to be making these decisions because like you said, we should be championing the women around us as well. I can have a, a, a business of my own, but what am I doing for the women that, you know, work with me every day and, and um, just my team overall, but yeah. Love it. We can and we will. <laughs> Um, well, that about wraps this special episode up, you guys. Thank you again, ladies. Um, you know, to everyone watching, we have, uh, we partnered with Puma to bring a really special uh, experience to our loyalty status members. Uh, you have a chance to win uh, some of these women's incredible products that they work so hard on. So make sure you check out our blog and our social channels for that opportunity. Um, ladies, Oh, make sure you follow all these ladies. They're, they're literally incredible. You can learn a lot just by following them. I think uh, all of their careers uh, are just so special. So um, any last words, guys? I just, I want you guys to have the last words here, but that about does it.
No, wishing you the best. Oh, thank you. Your, uh, baby. Oh. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> yes, congratulations. Congrats. Thank you so much, you guys. That's really sweet. Um, <laughs> well, anyways, thank you for tuning in, you guys. And we will see you next time on Community Voices. Nice to meet you, ladies. Thanks for having us.